In this short video, I'll explain the procedure of the disfluency effect experiment so you have all the information to write the materials and procedure sections of your method. To support this video, you'll find a file on the My Assessment tab which contains a breakdown of what the data file contains, all three versions of the characteristics to learn in the experiment, and all 25 of the multiple choice questions. When each participant accessed the link, they were randomly allocated into one of the three groups, the fluent or control group, this is where all the characteristics were written in a regular, easy to read font. The disfluent generation group, this is where vowels were replaced with underscores, meaning participants have to fill in the information as they read. If a word started with a vowel, this was not replaced. Finally, the disfluent manipulation group, this is where the text was presented in a cursive font, making it more difficult to read. Here we used the font freestyle script available in PowerPoint. All the characteristics were exactly the same, just presented in one of these three versions depending on which group the participant was allocated to. The order of the characters was also randomised, meaning participants did not see the five characters in the same order every time. The first measure was the participant's estimate for ease of learning. They were shown an example of the text they would read for two seconds. The text was an example from the group they had been randomly allocated into. Ease of learning was measured on a scale of 0 to 100, with 0 meaning it would be very easy to learn, and 100 meaning it would be very difficult to learn. The second measure was the participant's prediction of performance after they had viewed all five characters. Prediction and performance was measured on a 0 to 100 scale, with 0 meaning they thought they would answer non-correct, and 100 meaning they thought they would answer all the questions correct. Finally, the main measure was the participant's eventual recall. This was calculated by counting how many correct answers they provided and dividing it by 25, the total number of questions. This provides a percentage between 0 and 100. Now, in the following screencast, I'll run through the experiment on Gorilla so you don't have to keep clicking on the link. The experiment you're writing up is built using something called Gorilla. So for this experiment, I was the one who designed and made it, but you will get the opportunity to use it once it comes to cognitive psychology and potentially your dissertation if you uh, do an experimental project. It's created by making a series of tasks and questionnaires. So we've got things like debrief sheet, consent form, demographics, their questionnaires, and we've got three versions of a task, one for each of our groups. So if we click on experiments, this is how the experiment is structured. So you have to insert where you want all of your components. So they, from the start, you'd have gone to the information sheet, consent form, demographics. Participants were then randomized into one of the three groups. So I have control, manipulation, or generation, and then debriefed at the end. So to see what participants would have done, we can preview the experiment. So have our information sheet, which outlines what the participants will do, outline whether it's voluntary, any benefits, data protection. So we can click on next. We then have the consent form. So you can create a four digit number for if you want to withdraw your data. You then have to tick all the boxes to say you consent to take part. And next we have some brief demographic information. Once participants finished the demographics, this is now the main part of the experiment. So every participant is randomly allocated into one of the three groups. So we will see which one we've been allocated into for this version. So it looks like generation. We have a version where all, some of the vowels were replaced with underscores. So the first part is our ease of learning measurement. So how easy or difficult would it be? Let's go around 60 or 70. Click next. We then have the instructions uh, to explain what participants will be expected to do. So for each of the five characters, they are shown for 20 seconds. So once it starts running, we'll skip through it so you're not sat here in silence waiting for a ball to finish. But for each group, it's done exactly the same. The order is randomized, um, so not every person will see the characters in the same order. 
but it's um, the actual procedure is the same for all of them. It just depends which group they have been allocated into and the order that they see the characters. And once it's the last three seconds, participants are given a warning to tell them it's about to change screen. Now I've seen all five characters, we have our next measure, which is prediction of performance. So based on how we think um, that went, we can say what percentage of the answers we think we will get correct. So we'll be optimistic and go 60 or 70. And as a distractor to stop people rehearsing answers, we have a little bit of a maths distractor, which just asks you some basic math questions. And now we have the 25 item multiple choice questions asking us things about the characters. So once we finish the task, um, it just tells us um, and transitions to the debrief. So because we're collecting data online, it's normally a good idea to have a couple of items about data quality. So asking people to self-report, did you participate thoughtfully and diligently? So yes. And was it the first time you completed this study? Uh, just in case people clicked on the link multiple times. And for this, we can click yes. And finally, we have a debrief. So just explaining what the purpose of the study was. As previously, participants would not have known which group. Uh, there was multiple groups. It explains what all the groups were and recommendations on future research. And clicking next ends the experiment.